Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Iskan Bibidi Founder Charya, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Jai Vishnupad, Paramahansa Paravatikacharya, Stotter, Sutta Shishimar's Divine Grace, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, Ananta Gauri Vaishnavinda Ki Jai, Namacharya Shlahadadas Taku Ki Jai, Prem Sekaho Shikishna Chaitanya Prabhuna Chananda Shir. Wait to get it all, she was city go with a buck to bring the key jai. She she ride a Krishna go go pinath, Shamakunda, ride a Kunda, get it over down, key jai. Vrindavan dam, key jai. Nabadip my poor dam, key jai. Ganga jiminamai, key jai. Tulasi devi maharani, key jai. Samaveda buck to bring the key jai. Adinam sankirtan, a key jai. Brihat Madanga Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shri Shri Gurunga Gurunga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, chapter 15, text 18. Paravatan ya britya saras. Paravatan ya britya saras chak. Okay. Thank you. Paravatanya Brita Sarasa Chakravaka. Paravatanya Brita Sarasa Chakravaka. That you hamsa sukha tira barhinam ya da yu ha ham sa suka ti tira barhinam ya kola halo veramate chira matram uchair Kola halo viramate chira matram uchair. Beringa hipe hari lakatam eva gaya mane. Bringa hi pe hari katam eva gaya mane. Paravatan ya brita sara sa chakravaka. Dat yu ha ham sa suka titiri. Barhinam ya. Kola halo viramate chira matram uchair. Bring God, he pay harikatam eva gayamane. No.
Bhavachanyabhrtasarasachakravaka Tat yuha hamsa sukati tiri bahinam ya Kala halo vilamate chiramachamuchar Bring Aravatanya Brittasara Sachakravaka That you hahamsa sukati tiri bari namcha Kola halo vimarate chiramacha mucha Bengali pei harikatam niva namane Adijis Bhāravatanya Bhrtasāra Sachakravākā Tadyuha Hamsa Sukiti Tiri Bhārinam Yā Kola Halo Vilmate Chira Macham Uchār Bringadi pe harikatam mi bagayamane. Okay. Paravata. Pigeons. Anyabrita. Kuku. Sarasa. Crane. Chakravaka. Chakravaka. That you have. Gali nule. Anybody know what that is? Some sort of an animal, I guess. Hamsa, swan. Sukha, parrot. Titiri, partridge. Barhinam, of the peacock. Ya, witch. Kolahala, tumult. Viramate, stops. Achiramatram, temporarily. Uchai, loudly. Bringa Adhipe, king of the bumblebees. Harikatam, the glories of the Lord. Eva, as. Gayamane, while singing. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> When the king of bees hums in a high pitch, singing the glories of the Lord, there is temporarily, there is a temporary lull in the noise of the pigeon, the cuckoo, the crane, the chakravaka, the swan, the parrot, the partridge, and the peacock. Such transcendental birds stop their own singing simply to hear the glories of the Lord. Purport. This verse reveals the absolute nature of Vaikuntha. There is no difference between the birds there and the human residence. The situation in the spiritual sky is that everything is spiritual and variegated. 
Spiritual variegatedness means that everything is animate. There is nothing inanimate. Even the trees, the ground, the plants, the flowers, the birds and the beasts are all on the level of Krishna consciousness. The special feature of Vaikuntha Loka is that there is no question of sense gratification. In the material world, even an ass enjoys his sound vibration. But in the Vaikunthas, such nice birds as the peacock, the chakravaka, and the cuckoo prefer to hear the vibration of the glories of the Lord from the bees. The principles of devotional service beginning with hearing and chanting are very prominent in the Vaikuntha world. So this is a, not a long purport, so we'll kind of work our way through it. Okay. There is no, this verse reveals the absolute nature of Vaikuntha. There is no difference between the birds and the human residents. So that's, that's significant because, I mean, human residents means human beings. And there's no difference between the birds and the human residents. That means that they have a personality. That's, that's what I get from that. If there's no difference between the human beings, human residents have a personality. And if there's no difference between the human residents and the birds, it means the birds also have a personality. It goes on to say, the situation in the spiritual sky is that everything is spiritual and variegated. And then Papa, now in the next sentence, he gives us the definition of what it means for something to be spiritual and variegated. He says, spiritual variegatedness means that everything is animate. Okay, well, we kind of figured that out already. If, you know, if there's no difference between the, the birds and the human residents, the human residents are alive, the birds are alive. Papa's going on to say that everything's, animate means alive. So everything's alive. In the spiritual world, Vaikuntha, everything's alive. Everything has a personality. There is nothing inanimate. Even the trees, the ground, the plants, the flowers, the birds, and the beasts are all on the level of Krishna consciousness. Well, level of Krishna consciousness means, once again, that not only that you're alive, but you're, you have a personality. So all these different categories of uh, existence, you know, I, I, I guess I got to call them beings because we're just hearing how they're alive, they have a personality, the trees, the ground. The ground is alive in Vaikuntha and has a personality, right? I might, do you agree? Yeah. So the ground, in, in the Vaikuntha world, we're hearing, that's what we're hearing about, that not only the trees, but the ground, the plants, the stones, things that you'd ordinarily normally consider to be inanimate, they're animate and they have a personality. So that, and they're on the level of Krishna consciousness. They're not just any old animate and personality. I mean, there's plenty of people, plenty of things that are animate and have a personality in this world, but they're not Krishna conscious. But in the, in the Vaikuntha planets, everything is animate, has a personality, and it's Krishna conscious on top of that. See, so when you, when you go to Vaikuntha, you're going to be walking on ground that's alive, personal, and Krishna conscious. I mean, in Vaikuntha, you I guess you're walking on pure devotees all the time <laughs> by that analysis. But anyway, there it's, 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 the ground is alive. It has a personality and it's on the level of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada says, this special feature of Vaikuntha Loka is that there's no question of sense gratification. Well, that's another, no question of sense gratification. It's not that they don't have senses. That's, that's the, you know, the significance of that sense. It's not that they don't have senses, but they have no inclination to use their senses for personal sense gratification. There is sense, actually, probably, there is sense gratification. Probably there's no question of sense gratification. There's no question of material sense gratification. There's no question of selfish sense gratification. There's no question of the, the, the devotees in Vaikuntha wanting to gratify their own senses. They just want to gratify the senses of Lord Narayan. And that's who the predominating the expansion of Krishna that predominates in the Vaikuntha planets. So there's no question of personal sense gratification. But they're all, because why? Because they're all interested in the sense gratification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It says in the material world, even an ass enjoys his sound vibration. So in the, there's an expression, everybody loves the sound of their own voice. Heard that, right? And it's, um, it's kind of true, unfortunately. In the, here in the material world, everybody loves the sound of their own voice. But, um, and Prabhupada's 
you know, taking that to an extreme here, saying even an ass enjoys this sound vibration. Of course, we wouldn't, Prabhupada, I mean, Prabhupada knows that on the basis of the Shastras. I mean, we have experience that people love the sound of their own voice. I mean, we don't know about animal psychology, but here we're getting even information about the animal psychology, what to speak of human beings, even the animals, NAS, any kind of non-human creature, they enjoy the sound of their own voice. But in the, why is that? Well, it's so egotistical, because here in the material world, we're covered by false egoism, and that's what causes us to uh, be like that, that we enjoy the sound of our own voice. Imagine an ass is enjoying this, his own sound vibration, or just some crow, the crow. He thinks, yeah, I'm singing beautifully. Everybody's heard crows, right? It's horrible. But they think, oh, I'm singing very beautifully, right? Why? Because they're covered by the false ego. So <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a bad quality. And, uh, but when, I'll say it at this point. The solution is not to try to, we can't, re, we can't try to stop vibrating sound. You know, that's, that's not practical and probably be very difficult to do, if not impossible. So in the first canto, I think it's the fifth chapter of the Bhagavatam, Narada Muni is preaching to Vyasadeva and he says, O oh, good soul, does not a thing applied therapeutically cure a disease which was caused by the very same thing? So human beings, all living entities, what to speak of human beings, all creatures in the material have this uh, inclination to vibrate sound and they're like their sound, the crows like their sound, the ass likes his sound, humans like their sound, you know. Um, I know I've had, I have this experience a lot and I'm guilty of it myself that I'm talking with somebody and we're discussing a particular point and be honest with you, like within seconds I know, I know exactly what they're going to say. I, you know, I got it, you know, I don't, you can't be rude. Because I have to, sometimes I have to sit there and we will, and I do it too. You have to sit there and listen for another 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes, sometimes, it depends who you're talking to, 10 minutes. You know, what they, within the first, first seconds, you know exactly what the person's, the point they're trying to make, but people like to talk. So, but, so we're fortunate in the human form of life, we have the opportunity to uh, purify that tendency. The animals don't. The ass, he's just gonna continue his material sound vibration and be in material consciousness for the, his whole life as an ass and the crow the same thing and any other species you can name. But as human beings, we have the opportunity we could, uh, if we start vibrating the you know, transcendental sound vibration, glorifying Krishna, you know, talking about Krishna, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, discussing the subjects of the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam, then we can purify that tendency to want to produce sound vibration, see? And it goes, it, it transforms from being egotistical to devotional, you know, our conscious, and our, con our consciousness gets purified by that process. That's it's a very important point. Actually, Prabhupada would repeatedly say that, um, well, actually, when I was in, before I'm out, I'll make another point before I make that point, that when I was in, I joined in Brooklyn, and, uh, and there was, and the temple president had a sign in his office it was by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Nonsense talk breeds nonsense thought, breeds nonsense action, breeds birth, death, old age, and disease. So, you know, at least according to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and that's, it starts from the, the vibrating. We have this inclination to vibrate sound. So it starts with the talk. And um, yeah, so we have to try to transform that. We have to try to in, vibrate in Krishna's service. And Prabhupada used to say, many, many lectures. I have a, I actually compiled a notebook because I, you know, I listen to lectures pretty regularly. And I keep hearing Prabhupada make this point, you know, that devotional service begins with the tongue. And the tongue has two functions. One is tasting and the other is vibrating. And he would quote that verse, Atakshri Krishna Namadi, Nabhavad Krayamindriya, Sevan Mukhe Hiji Vado, Spayameva So it means that the Krishna can't be understood by these gross material senses. He's understood by devotional service and that begins with the tongue. And, and then Papa would go on to make the point that the tongue has two functions, tasting and vibrating. So we just have to do that. 
you know, we're already tasting and we're already vibrating, so we just have to practice tasting and vibrating in the service of Krishna. And then what happens is your, your consciousness gets purified as a result of doing that, that contact with the, the prasadam, which is non-different from Krishna, and the Krishna kata, which is non-different from Krishna. The consciousness gets purified and we become elevated to the plasma pure devotional service, which is already there. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sabu Kabinaya Shravana De Sutta Chitta Kori that pure love for Krishna is lying dormant within the heart of every every living entity. And Shravana De Sude Chitta Kori Udaya that it's awakened by this process of hearing and chanting. So this is what we, we want to do that. Goes on to say uh, in the Vaikuntas, such nice birds as the peacocks, the chakravaka and the cuckoo prefer to hear the vibration of the glories of the Lord from the bees. The principle of devotional service beginning with hearing and chanting are very prominent in the Vaikuntha world. So, uh, yeah, these uh, other creatures that are in the spiritual world, when, uh, you know, when, when somebody like when they the bees are glorifying the Lord, okay, let's you know, let's hear it. In other words, here in the material world, everybody's competing. I I, I found a I'll read you an excerpt from a lecture that I listened to the other day. Prabhupada says, "There is bija, the propensity for lording it over material nature, resources. Uh, that is bija of materialistic life." how to become very great personality within this material world. Uh, Bhakti yoga is just the opposite. Prabhupada says, here everyone is trying to become greater than the other. But Bhakti yoga is so nice. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches, Gopi Bharta Pada Kamalai or Dasu Das Anu Das. Servant of the servant of the servant of the servant. The more you become servant of the servant, the more you advance. And here in this material world, the more you become greater than your friend, then the more you advance. But then he goes, but, but he says, that, but also the more you become implicated or entangled. And he goes, uh, just the same principle. The more you increase your temperature, he gives an, uh, this is like a nice example. The more you increase your temperature, you are facing death. Certain temperature is required. Okay, so certain temperature is legit, 98, point, 98 degrees. But if you simply increase your temperature, if you're always just trying to become greater and greater and greater, a certain amount of, okay, you got to have self-esteem. You can't, you know, you got to have a certain amount of self-esteem and like that. But then if we're always desiring to become, you know, greater and greater and greater, then Papa says here, if you simply increase your temperature, oh, it is very nice, then at 107 degree, you finish, you die. So this material improvement means meeting death. Uh, he says, uh, nationalism's competition with, uh, Nation, which, which nation is greater? Now they have manufactured the atomic bomb. Uh, that means finishing point. That, that means they've come to the finishing point. Then Papa goes, this propensity, we should always remember that. This propensity of always, that I shall be greater than him. I shall overlord him. And Papa says, that's material. And he says, just like my God brothers, they had that propensity. Oh, he has become greater than us. And the Papa says, they were very envious. The, the propensity... Uh, that propensity was there. He says, they had no spiritual sense. Um, Prabhupada says, in, but in the spiritual world, if somebody is greater in service, this is what we're uh, kind of hearing about here. Uh, you know, the, the, the bee is vibrating the glories of the Lord. So these other um, creatures, they're prepared, okay, let's hear him. You know, feed the hot hand, so to speak. In other words, if, this, if the bee is inspired to glorify Krishna, Okay, let's be quiet and let him, let's listen to what the bee has to you know, say. And anyway, Prabhupada says here that, that that's Vaikuntha or that's Radharani spirit. He goes, <clears throat> oh yeah, in the spiritual world, if somebody is greater in service, others they appreciate. Oh, how great he is, how he is advanced in Krishna's service. We could not do it. Prabhupada says, that is Radharani spirit. Why Radharani is worshipped by the devotees? Uh, because her spirit is like that. She finds a nice devotee of Krishna. She immediately recommends to Krishna, how nice this devotee. He can render better service than me. Please accept him. Prabhupada says, that, this is spiritualism. This is spiritualism. He repeats it. Who can give better service than Radharani? She is so great that she's captivating Krishna. Um, and he goes on. He quotes that verse, Tapta Kanchana Godang, that verse in glorification of Radharani. says, um, 
as soon as a humble devotee approaches Radharani by glorifying Krishna, immediately she accepts, oh, how great he is. He is doing greater service than me. So Prabhupada says, this is Mahabhagavat Darshan. Uh, they see that everybody is engaged. So anyway, so th this is what we're hearing about here. And the next verse we're going to hear about all the, uh, how all the plants acknowledge the great service of Tulsi. But that's the, um, you know, that's, that's the Vaikuntha mentality. That we're not trying to be, they're not trying to become greater than the greatest, greater than the greater than the greatest like that. They're trying to become the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant. And that's, uh, and that's what human form of life is about. You know, trying to under, understand that. Um, you know, trying to understand that we are insignificant creatures. You know, there's creature, there's many creatures, different types of creature. And then there's the creation, which is way better than any little creature. And then there's the creator. Yesterday I was flying back from Atlanta and I just had that realization, man, I am just a creature and I'm just an insignificant creature. I'm only one of eight billion human beings on this planet. It's nothing, you know? And then, then and, and even all the eight billion human beings on this planet, when you get up in an airplane and you're looking at the whole, th you know, you're just going on for hours and you're just seeing like vast, vast, how the, how the vast creation and you realize the whole human race is kind of insignificant. You know, and I'm just one of eight billion human beings and the whole, but even the whole human race is insignificant in, cre in, in relation to the creation. It's so vast. And the whole vast creation is insignificant in relation to the creator. Because, you know, this, w w everything I was seeing is just a teeny little aspect of everything that Krish God, Krishna is creating. So, you know, it just helps you kind of, what's the word, reevaluate what you're your motives and your uh, what what should what should be you know what we should be f trying to do with our life and it's it's obviously s wasting our time just competing to try to be greater than the greater you know that's a waste of time what we sh really should be doing is trying to understand our relationship who we are and who Krishna who God is what our relationship is and in the Bhagavad Gita. There's that verse, Manushanam Sahasresu Kaschit Yadati Siddhartha. There are many thousands among men. One may endeavor for perfection. You see, so that's, you know, we have to kind of move in that direction. And, uh, and there's different levels of being, moving in that direction. Like George Harrison, he, he's, he's famous for a bunch of songs, but one of the songs that inspired a lot of, uh, you know, the older generation of devotees here was that song, My Sweet Lord. So in that song, he's singing, you know, I really want to know you, Lord. I really want to see you, Lord. I really want to know you, Lord. But it, that's good. You know, he, he, he's, he's on the right track there. He made a good start. And then you could say that's perfection because he's, you know, he's desiring to, to be, understand about the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, not himself, right? So that's good. You know, he's, that's, you could say that's perfect. But in spiritual life, there's perfect, more perfect, and most perfect. So that's perfect. More perfect than that is the understanding that's presented to us in the uh, Bhagavatam in the second chapter, uh, six, sorry, second canto, fourth chapter, um, verses 20 through about 24. This is that, and, and that's chapter of the Bhagavatam has found the prayers by Sukadeva Goswami. You know, he's offering prayers. And uh, I'll read you one or two of those prayers. He says, He is the super soul and the supreme lord of all self-realized souls. He is the personification of the Vedas, religious scriptures and austerities. He is worshipped by Lord Brahma and Shiva and all those who are transcendental to all pretensions. Being so revered with awe and veneration, may the Supreme Absolute be pleased with me. And for the next four verses, he keeps repeating that phrase, you know, um, may the, may the, you know, may this, may the uh, Supreme Incarnation on this earth, the Supreme all in all, be merciful upon me. Um, you know, may he, may the Lord be pleased with me. Um, may he be, you know, the same thing, may he be pleased with me. Like, may he decorate, may, be, may he decorate, be pleased to decorate my statements. 
So like that. So he's, he's understood something more than George Harrison. <laughs> Sukadev Goswami. That more important than knowing the Lord and seeing the Lord is simply that he's pleased with us. Right? You know, that's, you know, that's what's really important. And, and, and that's in the uh, second, first canto of the Bhagavatam, I think it's the second chapter, there's that verse, Atak pum bij rijas vrishta vanashrama vibhagasha sunusti tasya dharmasha sam sitiyat haritoshanam, that the perfection of all, uh, the, you know, occupational duties is just simply that the Supreme Lord is pleased with us. So that's, you know, a more advanced understanding than what George Harrison was expressing in that song. He wanted to see God. He wants to know God. Okay, that's good. As I said, it's a good start. But more important than that is that we can conduct our lives, our little existences, you know, in such a way that Krishna, the Supreme Personality God, is pleased with us. And we get information from Lord Chaitanya uh, in the, in the Shashashtika, what the perfectional stage of that mood is. In that verse, Aslishava Padaratam Panastumam Adarshanam Mama Tam Kurotiva Tata Tata Vavadhat Galampato Mapananatastus Evana Padaha. He says, I only I know I how's it going? Start me off. I know no one but Krishna is my Lord, and he shall remain so. Even if he handles me roughly in his embrace, or makes me broken hearted by not being present before me. He's completely free to do anything and everything. He's always my worshipful Lord unconditionally. See? So imagine that somebody was saying that to you, or that you were saying that to somebody. What would you be saying? I know no one but Krishna is my Lord. He shall remain. So even if he handles me roughly in his embrace and makes me brokenhearted by not being present, it's basically what you're saying, or somebody would be saying if they're saying that to you, is that I love you. It doesn't matter how you treat me. You can handle me roughly, you know, mistreat me. Or not, or just ignore me. Still, I'm, I love you. Uh, you know, you're free to do anything and everything. No matter what you do, I always love you like that. I always want, I always want to please you. I always want you to just be pleased. I want to see you happy. It doesn't matter if, I, if even in the course of you finding your happiness, I'm made unhappy. I just want that you're happy. I just want that you're pleased. That's the perfectional stage of wanting to please Krishna. That, that prayer right there is expressing a, a, a perfectional stage of what Sukadev Goswami is stating in his prayers there in, the, in the, uh, that chapter, chapter four of the Bhagavatam. You know, that he's just concerned that, that he's, Lord Chaitanya in the mood of Radharani is, is praying that, I just want Krishna to be pleased. It doesn't matter if he treats me badly. It doesn't matter if he, he ignores me, neglects me, whatever, you know. And, and this, this holds true forever. He's completely free to do anything. He's always my worshipful Lord unconditionally like that. So that's, we have to uh, aspire for that. That's, you know, that's the ideal standard. And uh, so there are devotees who are, who have understood that point and who are, have been over, you know, for years, I mean, historically speaking, and then even now, who have tried to do that in their life. And um, we, we should understand that, you know, if, uh, that it's, it's not impossible. Like, for, I want to read you something from, a, this is, Prabhupada quotes this. This is from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And it goes, Godan Gera Sangha that Prabhupada says, one who is intelligent understands that all the personal associates and devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were ever liberated. This means that they do not belong to this material world because they are always engaged in devotional service of the Lord. One who is engaged in the Lord's devotional service 24 hours daily and never forgets the Lord is called Nichasiddha. And, and he quotes this verse from Rupa Goswami. The, the Nitya Siddha has no business other than broadcasting the glories of the Lord all over the world according to his ability. Such people are already associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, Naratam Das Thakur says, Nitya Siddha Karimani. One should not think that because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was personally present 500 years ago, only his associates were liberated. 
Rather, Srila Narutam Das Thakur says that anyone is a Nichasiddha if he acts on behalf of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by spreading the glories of the holy name of the Lord. We should respect those devotees preaching the glories of the Lord as Nichasiddha and should not consider them conditioned. So that's an important point uh, there, that uh, we are able to recognize that within, even within our movement, there are devotees who are possibly Nichasiddha devotees. You know, they've been disciples of Prabhupada who for 50 years plus have been doing nothing other than, in a very serious way, trying to uh, preach the glories of the Lord. And you know, that's what we're hearing about in this verse here. And um, so, according to this purport, they need to be accepted as Nichasiddha devotees, or eternal associates of Lord Chaitanya. There's another uh, way that could be understood. Let's see here. Okay, must have. Oh, here we go. Well, I'm not going to rely on this. Um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur said that uh, it's, 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 this reference appears in that past time where um, I can't remember how it starts, but Narada Muni he comes across this hunter. Magrari, who's half killing all these animals, and uh, so he's, you know, he's, he sees. Well, first he sees all these half-killed animals in the forest, and he's thinking, "What the heck's going on here?" You know, and then he looks and he sees this hunter off at a distance, t like taking a position behind a tree, and uh, you know, getting ready to shoot with his bow and arrow some other animals, and um, so he goes off the path, and he starts approaching the hunter. And the hunter at first is angry. Well, he's angry, but because of the Narada Muni's presence was so powerful that he didn't say anything. He, he watched. He, he held his tongue, and he didn't say anything disrespectful to his good credit and to his good fortune. So he just basically, in a, he asked, "Why have you come off the path? You're scaring all the animals away." You know, he was he was getting ready to try to insult them and everything. And Narada Muni said, oh, you know, I, I was just, I had one question I wanted answered. And, uh, and he said, well, what's that? He said, well, you, who is responsible for, I noticed all these animals here, they're just half killed. Who, who is responsible for that? And uh, you know, he said, well, I am. You know, he said, well, wh wh why are you just half killing me? He said, well, my father's a hunter. This is what I was taught. And I get great pleasure in seeing these animals and then, you know, half suffering like that. And Narada Muni went, you know, there's a great sin involved in doing that. And this hunter didn't even, you know, the concept didn't even, he didn't even have the concept of sin, what it was. Anyway, Narada Muni kind of preached to him a little bit, explained to him. And so anyway, in, in, the, in the poor port, uh, so he became a devotee, basically. This, more, this Mugrari, the hunter, be, actually became transformed by the saintly association of Narada Muni, so much so that he... Uh, he, he, he gave up that occupation and he was willing on the instruction of Narada Muni to go to just set up a little cottage and, you know, have a, have a Tulsi plant. And him and his wife were there chanting Hare Krishna. And he was concerned about, well, how will we get our food? You know, how will we maintain ourselves? He said, don't worry, you know, we'll take care of that. And sure enough, what happened was the word got around that, hey, this hunter, Mogari the hunter, this cruel, mean hunter has become a, a Vaishnava. And people were so incredulous that, you know, they'd come to see it and they'd bring something. And uh, so then what happened was, after some time, Narada Muni came to visit, you know, his disciple, with his a close friend, his Parvat Muni. So they went to visit him. You know, he said, let's go see this for disciple of mine, you know, just for not, for, not not just for laugh, but just let's see what's going on here. So they went, and as they were approaching, they see Magrari the hunter kind of hop, skipping and jumping. And he was walking all erratically on the path, and, you know, he had his cloth, and he was, and, whoa, 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 how come you were walking like that? And he said, well, you know, I, I saw the ants, and I didn't want to step on them, so I was taking my, 
cloth to brush him away. And, uh, and Parvat Muni was like astounded, you know, because he, he'd heard from Narada Muni what this man's background was. So when he, you know, when he heard Magari say that, he was no longer Magari the hunter, he was Magari the saint or whatever you want to call him. But when he heard that, he went, he just thought, wow, this is incredible, you know. And he, and he privately told Narada Muni, he said, you are a touchstone. You are really a, a Sanskrit is Sparshamani, because you transformed this man who was a cruel, vicious hunter, and he took pleasure in half killing the animals. Not only was he a hunter, but he took pleasure in half killing the animals, and you've transformed him into a, a Vaishnava, and he's so sensitive now that he doesn't even want to harm an ant. So, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that's the measure of a Vaishnava, that he's. Uh, you know, how many people he's been able to transform into devotees of Krishna, like that. So, very important point. And I'll just end by saying a little something about something I just experienced in this last week. I was in Atlanta. I was invited to go there for um, like a Sankatan festival, I guess you could call it that. So, after that was over, I got, had the good fortune, I was able to go out on book distribution with uh, Mahatsa Das, who visited here about a year ago, I guess it was, and, uh, and kind of see him in action. And I have to admit, it was, it, was, it was amazing. It was an incredible experience. We went to a uh, suburb uh, called Swanee. It was about 45 minute drive from where their temple is. And there was a, uh, an Indian supermarket there called Patel Brothers. It's like, you know, just Indian. The whole, I mean, you feel like you're in India when you walk in there. It's all the Indian products, all the Indian decorations, all the Indian smells, everything. And, and it's all Indian people. So we just set up a table outside the store. And uh, as the people, mostly as the people were coming out, he would approach them. And, um, you know, he, he knows how to speak three Indian dialects fluently. Um, Telugu. Hindi, and I can't, and a bit, well, I think Gujarati. Maybe, maybe too fluently, and he knows some Gujarati, he knows some Bengali, he knows some Tamil. So basically, he could talk to every Indian person in a language, an Indian language that they could understand. So he could really connect with them, and, he, and he's good at that anyway. So, you know, he had oops, Bhagavatams out there. I mean, I, I, I kind of, I'd heard that he did, but until you actually see it, you don't fully believe it. We all North American BBT sets of Bhagavatams. We took about you know 24 of them out there in shopping carts and put them by the table. And he was you know stopping these people and talking to them. And he had a, a you know a way to present it. And they took the set of the Bhagavatams and they gave 305, 308 dollars, which is almost double the BBT for that. Um, one after the other. And I saw him, and a few people he sold three sets to. <laughs> he has a way of doing it, you know. Uh, he doesn't actually, he glorifies, he talks about the books, but he also has another, you know, uh, technique that he uses. And, uh, but the bottom line was, I was there, and, I, you know, he's, on I, the Saturday I went with him, the day we did a full day, he distributed 26 sets of the Srimad Bhagavatam, getting the full wholesale retail price. 26 sets of Srimad Bhagavatams, getting so that's empowered. You know, that's what we're hearing about here. I can't, I just, I just can't help but think that this fellow's a, a Nitya Siddha, you know, associate of Lord Chaitanya, and he's empowered because how do you do that? I mean, it's incredible. It was like, wow. I, as I said, if I didn't see it with my own two eyes, I mean, I'd heard about it, and, but seeing that was really amazing. It was really amazing to actually see that happen. And when you're watching it, it doesn't seem like anything, any big, he just talks to them and he knows how to joke. If they, for instance, I'll give you an example. He says sometimes people would say, you know, he'd give, he'd give his presentation and they'd say, yeah, 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 I, I want to do it online. I prefer to do it online. So then he said, you know, there's a sidewalk outside the store. So he'd say, oh, okay, really? Okay, could you just, just step over there for a second? And they'd take a step over to the side, and they'd be standing on the crack of the sidewalk. You know, so he'd say, so, yeah, so you're online now. <laughs> you know? 
you know, you're, you're on a line now, so let's, can we do it? You know, he'd make a joke like that, and then they would laugh, because, you know, he, the way he did it was really funny, and then he kind of, you know, it breaks him down, and then he kind of have another go at him. And, uh, and I saw so, there's so many people who initially would say no, you know, they, I mean, no, 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 no. But he just kind of kept, in a friendly way, never being like obnoxious or pushy, he was just able to kind of like keep giving another try, from another angle, sometimes just begging, you know, sometimes joking with them, begging, whatever, you know, and, and, and they, they just finally go, okay, okay, okay. And they take out the credit card and they just do it. And it was amazing, you know, and they were happy, you know. So uh, it was really an amazing thing. I, I hope I learned something from it. I learned one thing, don't let people off the hook too easy because, uh, you know, but not, not, you don't, you, you, you have to be, you're not obnoxious, you can't be, you have to be careful not to be pushy, too pushy, but you've got to pray to Krishna to give the intelligence to kind of, people need a little bit sometimes extra encouragement. And that's, uh, you know, I saw that time after time. So anyway, that's an example of um, what we're hearing about here today, you know, glorification of the Lord. Um, it says, um, you know, Lord Chaitanya said he wants every man, it's in the Chaitanya Charnam, every man in the universe to take this Krishna consciousness movement and distribute it. And, you know, he says, I've, he wants the fruits of love of God to be distributed. So what are the fruits? What does Lord Chaitanya mean by that? The fruit of the lo of love of God. Well, there's that verse in the second uh, chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Nigama Kalpatador Galitam Palam Sukhamukad Amritam You know that verse? How this Srimad Bhagavatam is the ripened fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. The, the Srimad Bhagavatam is the fruit of love of God. That's the point I'm clumsily trying to make. This is the fruit. The Srimad Bhagavatam is the fruit of love of God. By distributing the Srimad Bhagavatam, you're distributing love of God. This is the you know, written form of love of God. So that's, you know, he's doing that. He was doing that. He's, just, he's distributing love of God by distributing the Srimad Bhagavatam. And, and we will be too if we try to follow in his footsteps. So um, I'll stop there. I'm already a little bit over time. Does anybody have anything, any question, anything they'd like to say? Okay, thank you very much. Gantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Srila Prabhupada Kijai.